but let's see. So I think we have more than half of the class in the session already. But I think suppose we have around at least 25. All right, so uh, I will start. I will start the class. So the session is recorded. Um, uh, so if in case if you want to do revision, right, so what you need to do is just to uh, come back to this Teams and then you'll see the recording is ready there. All right, so then I'll not be uploading the link separately in my times anymore. All right, okay, that, that would be double job. So you just need to uh, like refer back to this Teams here, then you can see the video recording directly. All right, so uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'm Dr. Chow. So some of you have already met me last time for mass transfer. Maybe it's for one batch of students you are still new to me. Right? <laughs> yes, uh, for August semester, I'm away on maternity leave. So I just back in uh, around December. But I, I thought it's a short time. Then now with the uh, April semester. Okay, so uh, there will be two batch of students. I think two batches of students here. Uh, because uh, August semester, in August 2023, this module was closed because there's no uh, lecturer teaching this module. So, uh, yeah, there will be two batches. So that there's a bit, uh, uh, quite quite some number of students in this class here. Now, uh, then for information, the uh, as I mentioned in your message, right, the my times message, and also in Telegram. So make sure you have joined the Telegram also Telegram group. Okay, so the lecture class is fully online. Uh, throughout the whole semester and then you just need to join the session using the same link right just the same link that uh, yeah using the same link that is available in my times and I've also pinned the same link also in telegram okay so now let me see only 15 students huh? <laughs> right uh, just to check uh, do you have any class before 10 today any class before 10 if not, perhaps someone can help to type no. Okay, from Junhan, no. How about others from another batch of students? Do you have any class before 10? So I, I know how to organize the pace of your lecture class. No, everyone know. How about after after 12? Do you have any class after 12? Nope, as well for, for Eon's batch. Uh, okay, another batch. Oh, CGP briefing. Okay, just for today, is it? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, okay, that's great. So, you don't have any class before 10 and after 10, huh? <laughs> uh, after 12, sorry. <laughs> after 12. Then, uh, but, but anyway, I'll still need to end the class at 12, all right, because uh, I have I have back to back lecture on Monday. 10 to 12, AHM, 12 to 2 mass transfer <laughs> so i still need to leave at 12 so in case if let's say if you have any question i'm so sorry that i couldn't answer it during the online lecture section so you note it down all right and then uh, you can ask me during the tutorial on tuesday all right because i'll need to rush to another <laughs> online lecture class at 12 all right just to let you all know in that one first all right so and, and then apologies for my voice today yeah. I have a very bad sore throat and cough last week and, uh, and I almost lost my voice for a few days already. So this, this few days is better. All right, now well, let's start. I will start with uh, giving you a briefing about this module. So HM, right? Uh, firstly, okay, there are some students still joining. Let me admit them. I think they are here. If you notice, if any of your friend is joining and then uh, someone need to admit them, please help to admit your friend to the class. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so now welcome back. Alright, first day of the semester and then you start, you're started with this this theoretical module here. Now, so I'll give you a, a, like an overview. What is this module about and what you can expect from this module? What are the skills that is required? Alright, before we dive into the lecture, lecture note. Alright, so now, uh, hopefully everyone here is from Chemical Engineering Program. Uh. Asian is only offered advanced heat and momentum transfer. So this is only offered, this module offered to Chemical Engineering students only. So uh, for those who are joining this module, right, you are expected to have some of this knowledge or have passed. Uh, it would be better that you have taken this module here on the list, like Engineering Maths in your first semester with Mechanics. Thermodynamics and heat transfer from year year one, and then from year two you're entering maths as well, 
uh, CTS, mass transfer, and uh, unique operation is more to between the separation processes. All right. So why we say unique engineering mathematics? Because we will be doing quite an amount of uh, solving quite an amount of maths. Actually, we will need to formulate temperature and velocity profile, and that will be deal deal with your uh, ODE. I wonder if you all still remember from your engineering maths too, ordinary differential equation, all right? And when when you have your ordinary differential equation, then you need to solve it using integration. So in this module, you have to do a lot of it. In case if you if you find yourself still very blur or or couldn't recall back or have have some challenge in solving this kind of uh, ODE and integration, please start to practice as soon as possible. Right, so we'll be doing a lot of formulation of temperature and velocity profile. Right, so this module is un, uh, is not similar to like your PPDE process plan design, your separation or uh, control or CGP. Those are more to applications. But at one C and momentum transfer is more to theory, the background for things how it happens. We look in very in very detail in very in depth into some processes. Alright, so that's why we are formulating temperature and velocity profile. And why we are doing that, <laughs> I'll explain to you later eh, as we go with each chapter. Alright, so then heat and momentum transfer, right? So which means we'll be doing with heat transfer and momentum transfer. Heat transfer, you have to learn about the basic in thermodynamics, right? So that's why you need to, uh, you should have passed and taken this module before you take this module, right? So we'll talk about heat transfer in more advanced level, uh, besides formulating temperature profile. How you actually get all your H value, right? The uh, convective uh, heat transfer coefficient, the H value, all right. So and also uh, fluid mechanics is necessary as well as mass transfer. It's best that you have already passed and taken this module here, uh, because when we talk about momentum transfer, it's a transfer of some energy, all right, and also some amount of molecules from one section from one place to another, right? So you may need some basic knowledge about a uh, mass and uh, fluid mechanics, right? Because we'll also talk about pressure drop, all right? So uh, if you have taken all this, so that's why you're here in this module here, all right? So if you have not taken any of this module, especially the mass transfer, um, do, do, do e either talk to me or discuss with your program director, is it, whether is it appropriate for you to take this module at this time, because it will be quite challenging. It, it will be challenging, uh, all right. So, but for engineering maths, I believe everyone has taken it, uh, Okay. Now, so that's the uh, the requirement, all right. That it is some like the basic skills that you should have by now before taking this module. And then, so for this module, we have four learning outcomes. So this information here is extract from the extracted from your module information, the MI that I posted in my times, right? So I put it in a slide so that it's easier and bigger for you to refer. So we have four learning outcomes. Three is more to, uh, it will be in your assignment and also in test and also in final exam. All right, so, and the last one, if you look at it is for the practical, okay? So the first one, we will focus on analyze. So this is a third year module. So that's why you see uh, you, you'll be tested on higher level. So by the end of the module, uh, when you have learned each chapter, right, you should be able to analyze the flow behavior of engineering system using the laws of conservation. Right. So for this uh, module, we focus on uh, the law of conservation for momentum, right? if it's regarding the flow behavior. The second learning outcome is analyze the thermal behavior of engineering system using the laws of conservation for heat or for energy. It should be for energy, all right? Laws of conservation for energy. So we'll be covering today also what are some laws of conservation, right? And then to a higher level, then you'll be tested on formulation. So which means you need to formulate, um, how should I put it, equation, all right, from perhaps an ODE, right, then you need to formulate towards the end, solve it to get an equation that can describe the temperature and velocity profile of some engineering system, all right, some system, right, that's what you'll be learning, right, and we have few different ways to formulate it that you need to master, all right, formulate temperature and velocity profile for fluid flow 
on various surface geometry. All right. So, uh, and the last one, it will be for practical investigate thermal and flow behavior of fluid through various experiments. So we only have two experiments. Um, let me think. <laughs> What's the name of it? <laughs> I kind of forgotten. One is more re related to the velocity. And another one is more related to uh, we are going to solve for the H value, the convective heat transfer coefficient. So just two experiments, which actually can be done in uh, a day, four hours. So uh, the timetable for lab uh, is not released yet. Uh, Mr. Rahim is still working on it. So that's why no 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 lab for this week and next next week <laughs> till the timetable is released. Now, uh, then. Um, for the two laps, it can actually be finished within two hours if uh, you all can handle it. Uh, but the timetable, they will still arrange it at, uh, in two separate sessions. So uh, we'll discuss again about this, how to uh, proceed with the lab, lab uh, experiment, whether you all want to combine it. Depends on group, uh, you all can discuss with me whether you all prefer to finish all uh, within a day so that you do not need to come on another day. All right, so you all can discuss with me. Then we finalize during that time. All right, so but no worries, although if you are doing it uh, like all on the same day, I'll still allow you all to submit according to the lab time table. All right, according to the lab time table, which means one of the lab experiment, even if you do it earlier, you may have extra time to finish it. All right, only for this module. Uh, please don't cook my name. <laughs> only for this module, <laughs> the advantage. Right, please don't quote my name <laughs> when you talk to other lecturers about this, right? <laughs> Alright, keep it to yourself, uh, to, to, to us in this module, I mean. Alright, okay. So, four learning outcomes. Three focus, um, okay, I'll, I'll show you uh, what we are going to learn uh, in each week. Alright, so, this week, uh, it will be a little bit chill, right? We, you'll be introduced to some terms and some theories, concepts, uh, cons, uh, concepts, uh, and laws related to advanced transport processes that will be week one. Then uh, week two and week three will cover momentum transfer. Week two is more like we talk about the Newton law of viscosity, but week three it would be very intensive. We will formulate velocity profile. So please make sure you do not absent for week three. All right, that's very very important topic. All right. So, um, as for your assignment, I think I'll only release it tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow. Sorry, week two. All right. When we have covered Newton law of viscosity, because your first assignment is about this topic here. All right. So you can start anytime when we have done the lecture for week two. All right. Then, uh, week four to week five, we will learn about molecular heat transfer. It's not the basic, uh, conduction, convection, and radiation that you're taught yeah that it's more 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 at once all right it's more at once right where you learn how to form it a little bit a basic temperature profile using some theory <coughs> <coughs> yeah all right so uh, most probably week four we'll revisit re back on the basic for heat transfer first that will be week four then week five we will be formulate temperature profile all right, so which means you can see whenever we formulate temperature profile, make sure you don't miss the class. All right, okay. Then week six to week eight is where we start to learn about the convective heat transfer. All right, so you learn how to uh, calculate, right? Use some correlation under some circumstances. What are the correlation that should be applied for different types of geometry to get the convective heat transfer coefficient H value. All right. So uh, at the same time, your week, uh, your assignment one, it will deal on week seven. Uh, all the assignment for this module, I don't know whether it's a good news or a bad news. All right. All the assignments are individual assignment. <clears throat> Except for practical, of course. Lab report is good. <laughs> okay. Lab report is good. All right. Okay. So now, uh, okay. So let's see, your assignment 1 is 20 marks, it's due on week 7, so I'll release it on week 2, so you have, you have at least 5 weeks to work on it, yeah? Alright, so then, uh, equation of change for heat and momentum transport, we'll cover it on week 9 to week 10. Uh, this is more intensive classes on how to formulate the velocity and temperature profile using 
like narrow, we call it the narrow stock equation. Maybe some of you have heard about it, the narrow stock equation, all right, or the equation of change uh, for temperature, all right. So uh, that's something that we are going to learn, all right. Then uh, for week 11 to week 13, we will talk about the boundary layer theory, all right. So we'll spend at least two to three weeks on this. So same thing to formulate the temperature and velocity profile for boundary layer. So what we mean by boundary layer is, let's say if you have a plate here and the fluid, when it first impact the plate, right? So when it flow, flow over, there will be a, yeah, this is the, <clears throat> the whole fluid, uh, the velocity profile, right? How it will look like. But our concern here in this topic is we'll look at only the velocity profile in this section, in the boundary layer, all right? That's the topic that we are going to discuss. And towards the end of the semester, so all this that we discuss here, you notice is more to steady state, right? Then uh, there will be one topic that we'll talk on time-dependent transport, on steady state uh, heat transfer or uh, momentum transfer, all right? So that will be on a, maybe last week, but I'll see how the semester goes and maybe I may uh, bring this to earlier, yeah, earlier week. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now, so if you look at here, assignment one, individual, 20 marks due on week seven. And then we have assignment two, 20 marks due on week nine. So assignment one is more related to L01 about the uh, analysis on heat uh, 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 analysis on flow behavior, right? Flow behavior. While assignment two is related to learning outcome number two related to analysis of thermal behavior this is learning outcome number two so this module is a bit special all your assignment due first while the tests fall on the tests will only fall on week 12 right it's 10 marks and then it covers learning outcome number three which is the one which is the challenging one you need to know how to formulate temperature and velocity profile Right, so that's why I say it's very important that you know how to formulate it, right? Because uh, in final exam, uh, you'll be tested on all three, one, two, three. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss with you the breakdown, all right? So how, how is it like when it's final exam? But make sure you master this one, formulation of uh, temperature and velocity profile, okay? Now, um, let me see. <clears throat> Okay, I'll come to this first. Uh, we'll go look at this first. All right. So lecture, there's only one lecture on Monday, 10 to 12, right? And it's fully online. All right. And then Tuesday, tomorrow would be our tutorial, 4 to 6 p.m. It's quite late here. Uh, and unfortunately, I have to tell you earlier that our like, tutorial class definitely will need to, like, can only be completed earliest by 6 p.m. <laughs> because there are a lot of uh, formulation. You need some time to like uh, try on the question and then formulate the equation, right? So it takes some time. So, uh, so plan, plan plan your time wisely. All right. So the class definitely can only <laughs> earliest end by 6 p.m. Huh? All right. So then on Thursday we'll have our lab session two to four. Uh, uh, it's just for two experiment, right? So if, if you don't want to combine it, then it will be two sessions. If you want to combine it, then we can uh, finish in one session, right? Depends from group to group on the preference, all right? So it will be at Energy and Fluid Lab. So this week, no lab, all right? So your lab will only start until the lab timetable is released, yeah? All right? And uh, for for your, uh, for ASHAM, the lab, you do not need to wear lab clothes. Because this is the one, the lab that you all did the uh, experiment for thermal and heat transfer. But you don't need to wear lab coat just to make sure uh, you wear long pants, covered shoes. All right. And then, yeah, tie up your hair for girls. All right. So just, just to repeat, uh, all assignment is individual, due on one, due on week seven, another due on week nine. This, uh, or most of the topic we would have already finished by week five. For those that is related to assignment, so you have at least one week, uh, one month to solve it, and then no worries. Assignment one is just like one question, one case study, and then just sub question. So definitely can be handled individually. Assignment two, uh, there will be two question, 
All right, there will be two questions that will be tested. Same thing, uh, the scope and the load definitely can be handled individually. Oh, some students, last time your senior can finish in three days. All right, if you really master everything, sit down, focus, and finish it. Your senior finished in three days last time. Okay, so this is 20% for each. Test is on week 12, 10%, lab report, two lab report, 10 marks each. Right, so it's 100% then converted to 10 marks. Final exam. All three learning accounts will be tested and total is 30. So make sure you have to score at least 15 here. And then, uh, yeah, total up, you must have at least 50% to pass the module. All right. So um, any question before I proceed further? Any question that you would like to ask? You can unmute or you can type in the chat area. Or if it's all good, then you just give a thumbs up. Then we can proceed. Uh, hello. Yes, Yi Hong. Uh, Dr. Shaw, I want to mm. ask right, for the lab, um, mm. if if we do both experiments at the same day, then how many hours will it take? Is it two hours total or four hours? I four think hours. it's four hours. Oh. Four hours because uh, the reason is you only have one equipment for each, right? So the, the, then uh, for, for one of the equipment, definitely the students who, who are scheduled to do it, they will need to finish it first, right? Then the, the other group, you can finish your experiment first. One, once you have finished, that one should be finished by two hours. Then another group, when they have finished using the equipment, then you can use that. Then you can continue on the same day. So it will take two hours for each. So it depends because the, the reason why I say uh, it depends on your preference because uh, your lab is on Thursday to, oh my, <laughs> I didn't, sorry, it should be 6, uh, 6 p.m. <laughs> yeah, now I get why you asked me, <laughs> right? It, it's 4 hours, 6 p.m. Uh, so if, you are, if your group is planning to combine all on the same day, right, you'll need 2 hours for each experiment, so total is 4 hours. Okay, you need at least 4 hours. So if it depends on you whether you want to sacrifice just one time, all right, to to go back late just one time all right then you can combine all but if you prefer to go back earlier then you just stick to your timetable right you come for two sessions all right hmm. so any any other question yeah yeah okay oh no i just saw the the chat. Yes, one of the experiment is cross cross flow heat exchanger. Another one is something related to pipe flow, pipe uh, friction in pipe, something like this. All right. Okay. If no further question, now. So if you are wondering what are the book the that you can refer for this module as in your MI, some of you may have already have this book here. If you are if you are if you have taken mass transfer. Uh, the gene copies, uh, transport processes and spa separation processes principles. All right. And another one, it will be the book by Bird, all right, for introductory transport phenomena. So if you're interested, you can try to borrow this book from the library. Or, yeah, you can have your own way to find the PDF version also online. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, so if there's no further question on the plan for this module for this semester, right? Then um, I'll start the lecture, yeah? Right, so the session is recorded. You all can always refer back. Now, there are 60 slides for lecture one, but no worries. Uh, like 20 plus towards the end of the slides are more like formulas. Uh, and you can find it also in the formula section that I've uploaded in my times. All right, it's over there. there. Right. And you're not expected to memorize it, don't panic. <laughs> if you if you if you are now like looking at the last few slides, you're not expected to memorize it. Alright, okay, don't panic. Huh? It will be provided if it's tested in your final exam or test. Alright? Okay. Now let's start with our first lecture. Now for today, um it's more like introduction to what is heat transfer and momentum transfer and some of the terms uh, and conservation and constitution law that we are going to learn. So that's why uh, 
But here, I would just like to highlight it's still mapped to your these two, but more at a more basic level to learn about what is the flow behavior and what are the laws of conservation that governs the flow behavior and the thermal behavior. Not to the analysis level yet. Analysis level is next few more weeks. All right. So today we are going to talk about uh, what are the type of transport processes we have. And for each type of transport processes, what are the mechanisms that involve and what are constitution laws and actually also the conservation law. And then we'll look at some general terms that we are going to use in this module and the mathematical operators, like the symbols, all right, that we'll use in transport processes, which later you may see in some of your general equation, for example, the narrow stock equation or the equation of change for temperature. All right. Now, so, okay. All right. So this is just the next uh, repetition. So by the end of the topic, you should be able to explain what are the transport mode mechanism, what are constitutive law that is available. Right. Now, let's look at transport processes. <clears throat> All right. Now, so when we talk about transport processes, can someone tell me what are the three types of things that can be transferred? Any idea? You have learned two last time. And you are going to learn another one soon. Okay, yeah, thanks, Yiho. Mass, mass, uh, mass, mass transfer, heat transfer, and the third one is the momentum transfer. Right? These are three main types of transport processes. Only three, right? Not other. Okay, mass heat uh, or you say energy and then momentum so when we talk about transport processes which means it's the transfer of certain amount of things from one point to another right so which you can see here quantities can move from one place to another and the three form oh the answer is here also right and the three types of things that can be transported mass energy and momentum right between so usually when we analyze the system you analyze what it ha what is happening within the system. It, within the system, there is also transport processes. But at the same time, when you look at, uh, let's say, a bigger view, right? It could be also what are the interaction between the system and its environment. For example, energy transfer, right? So uh, the heat transfer, you have insulation, right? So that's an example of uh, the interaction between the system that you are observing and the environment. All right. So. For all this, that's why it's related to the fluid dynamics, heat transfer, and the mass transfer that you learned last time. All right. And for transport processes, um, I wonder if you have like thinking about this. So actually, transport processes we can analyze at three different levels: the macroscopic level, the microscopic level, and molecular level. Now, so far, what you have been learning, right, since your heat transfer and mass transfer. Your, your focus is all here only, the macroscopic level, if you, if you look back, recall back, right? So mass transfer, you learn about. So uh, what is the amount of uh, raw material going in and then what is the amount of product that is going out? That's at macroscopic level, right? Okay, mass in equals to mass out if it's at steady state. Then if it's energy, so what is the amount of heat let's say that you need to provide to this uh, fluid system in the reactor if you want to maintain it at certain temperature to pre prevent it from overheating or to, or you need to supply heat to make sure the chemical process will go on uh, smoothly. So all these are macroscopic level, all right? But if, let's say, all right, if you want to know better, all right, so if you know, want to know better about the process itself, or you want to design something, right? So then you may have to look at the microscopic level. So let's say this section of the fluid system, right? So then we analyze it at microscopic level. So let's say we assume that the, the system that we choose, the geometry is like a cube shape, all right? It's like a cube shape, let's say, all right? That's the, 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 the focus, all right? So we want to know what is happening in the process. So most probably it's more towards um, fluid flow, and thermal behavior, whether uh, like the heat is being transferred homogeneously or uniform over the, 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 the that micro level, right? Or whether your mass mass right concentration is uniform throughout. 
also in this section. Now, so why as so many arrow here? Because all this it represent the forces, the forces that act on this system here at microscopic level act on each plane. So this is something that we'll talk about today. The forces, right? So that's the microscopic level where we look into uh, what happened to the velocity profile, right, and the temperature profile, right? Velocity and temperature profile, all right. So now, if this still doesn't satisfy you, all right. So this is the molecular level. Then, in, in that case, we are looking into those interactions, right, between the molecules and also the structure, molecular structure, to understand the process better. So you usually, at molecular level, is more to postgraduate study. <laughs> They'll derive formulas, uh, derive theories, right, and model to explain about the molecular interactions that actually give rise to all this velocity and temperature profile, right? But we are not going to that, right? For this module, right, we focus on the microscopic level only. Right, so those macroscopic level you have learned in uh, mass transfer and heat transfer. All right, now so uh, let's see. Now, now for example here, right, when we say analyzing in macro, micro, and then molecular level. So let's say if you have this equipment here, this system, and then this is your inlet. Right, we have a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen gas. Right, that travels into the system. And then this section here is the heating element. So as the gas mixture, it flows into the system, so it will be heated, right? It will be heated. And then when gas is heated, it will expand. And when it expands, it will do work on this uh, on something, right? So when it expands, it will do work on this, then mechanical work. Then you have mechanical work in this, this section here. And the gas mixture, it will leave through this outlet but if you look at here this section here you'll notice that there's change in the size of the cross-sectional area of the outlet right so it will affect which means it will then affect the fluid flow the velocity of the gas mixture so now when when we say microscopic level all right so you notice that when we analyze at microscopic level we are applying conservation law like the a conservation law for mass, conservation law for energy, or uh, if, if you're not sure what, what is the conservation law, which is the mass in minus mass out equals to, uh, let's say, uh, generation, accumulation of mass, if it's not a steady state, or heat, uh, heat entering minus the heat leaving, and then uh, plus heat generation equals to accumulation of heat. So at macroscopic level, we analyze using the laws of conservation. Right, so we'll talk about the laws of conservation later as well. Now, if we want to know better in detail of the process, because we have heating, right? So if you look at here, we have heating and fluid flow at the same time, right? So if you want to understand the process, how the temperature profiles look, looks like, or how the velocity profile looks like, right? Is it, uh, is is the velocity the same throughout the whole fluid, or is it so? If, if, if you recall back, right, so last time when you learn, right, when there's a fluid flow, there will be a region where your fluid, it flows in laminar flow, right? And then you have a transition region, right, a transition region, and then a, a turbulent, right, the turbulent region, right? So uh, all this because of friction of fluid flow, and then also at the same time, between within the fluid itself, there are viscosity. Right, there are interaction within the uh, among the molecules. All right, so that's why there will be a variation in velocity. Right, there will be variation in velocity. Perhaps that your velocity profile may look something like this. Okay, uh, uh, let me see. Sorry, this is wrong. <laughs> this is wrong. Your velocity profile in this case here it should looks right. So if you recall back, it looks something like this. Right, last time, nearer to the plate. Your velocity here will be almost equal to zero because of the friction. While, while uh, further away from the plate, it will almost as, uh, assume V infinity, the free flow velocity, because there's no friction to fluid flow, right? So then, how do we analyze this? So what we use is we call it the equation of change. Equation of change for temperature, right? We have equation of change for temperature, 
if we are going to uh, develop the temperature profile or we have the narrow stock equation. The narrow stock equation, they also derive it from equation of change where we use it to formulate the uh, velocity profile. All right, so that we can understand something like this, all right, the, how, how the velocity profile looks like. Okay, now uh, molecular level, as mentioned just now, is where we look into the structure, molecular structure and molecular interaction. Okay, now then uh, let's talk about this one. So now, the first one, at microscopic level, we have the conservation law, right? So, uh, a quick one, all right? So, when we talk about conservation law, it's a general equation that can be applied to either mass transfer, heat transfer, or momentum transfer. It's a very general equation, which is like this, all right? So, in, in general, it's the rate of quantity that is accumulated. It is equals to the rate of uh, transport of the quantity into the region minus the one that is leaving and then plus if there's any generation right, then it will be equal to the rate of accumulated all right that's the general conservation uh, laws of conservation so we have conservation of mass principle right and also for heat and also for momentum so i believe you have seen this so if it's for momentum it's the same the rate of momentum Accumulated equals the rate of momentum entering the system minus the rate of momentum leaving the system plus the rate of momentum generated, right? It's the same. So they also have some other conservation law for electrical or some density, but that's not our focus of study here, right? So the the few that you see most in this module is mass, energy, and momentum. All right. So now, what what? Uh, what did the conservation law says, right? If we recall back for mass, let's say the nitrogen, all right? So just now the gas mixture you have, you have nitrogen and oxygen, right? So if this nitrogen and oxygen, they behave like an ideal gas, and then if they are not interacting, there's no chemical reaction between them, right? So the nitrogen gas, the diatom nitrogen gas, and the diatom oxygen gas, they're just um, moving around randomly. The Brownian motion, right? And there's no interaction, no chemical reaction between them, right? They are, they are equally far apart, sufficiently far apart. Then in that case, according to the conservation law of mass, right? The total mass of the molecule entering should be equal to the, uh, the one that is leaving the collision, right? They must be equal. Same goes to energy. The energy of the colliding pair of molecules must be the same before and after collision if there is no chemical reaction, right? And as seeing goes to momentum, the sum of momentum for all atoms before collision must be equal to that after collision. Okay, so that, that's the basic principle for conservation law. Now, before I proceed to the next part, talking about the transport mechanism, any questions so far? Any questions so far? If it's all good, you just give a thumbs up. <laughs> so that's the downside of online lecture. I couldn't see your face. <laughs> I don't know whether you are... <laughs> I couldn't see your face, so I couldn't imagine whether... Mm. So if I can see you, then you'll be nodding your head, and I know you get it. <laughs> all right. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everyone, for the confirmation. <laughs> okay, let's see. All right. Oh, okay, great. Everyone is here already, yeah? Almost everyone, I think. All right. So, uh, now, basically, what we talked about just now is uh, what are the types of transport processes, right? Heat, mass, and uh, momentum, all right? And then the conservation law, right? The general equation of it. Accumulation equals to entering minus leaving plus generation, all right? That's the two key things that we talked about just now. Now, then the next question is, you know, there are heat, mass and momentum transfer. Do you still remember what are the two main type of transport mechanism? Just guess. You can type in the chat area. What are the two form of transport mechanism? Try and recall, you learned it back in heat transfer and mass transfer already. Anyone else? Any other answer? 
So from Ehong convection and conduction. For anyone agree with it? Ah, it's okay. Yeah, definitely one of it is require the convective transport. And um, so uh, conduction then is more specific for heat transfer. It's not wrong. It's just a more specific term for heat transfer. Or in more general term, they call it the molecular transport, right? So you have molecular transport and convective transport, the two, these two different things, right? So, and if you recall back, right, when we talk about diffusive or molecular transport, let's say thick mass transport, for example, right? So if you recall back, let's say if you have this system, and then initially there's a partition here, right? Region A, which, uh, okay, the left region, which in compound A, and then the right region, it reach in compound B. So if we remove this partition here, Right, so what happens? So definitely A, it will travel to the right side, right? Down a concentration gradient, right? Down a concentration gradient, if you recall back. Negative DCA, DZ. All right, well, B, it will then travel to the left side, down a concentration gradient as well, right? Then as time passes, you'll notice that there will be a region here where mixing is then occurred, All right? So which means when we talk about molecular transport, so usually it would be due to some uh, difference. Let's say in in mass transfer, it's due to concentration, right? The difference in concentration. While in heat transfer, then it would be due to temperature difference, right? It's due to temperature difference. And then this, let's say if it's conduction, then it's DTD side, right? DTD side. Just just example. Uh, if it's cylindrical, then definitely it's DTDR. All right, that's that's molecular transport. All right, so then for convective transport, we have uh, is due to bulk fluid motion. There should be bulk fluid motion, whether it's a natural convection or a forced convection. So forced convection example here, you have let's say a piston that push the fluid into and out of the system, right? So then the transport mechanism would be by bulk uh, bulk motion. Okay, now let's look at here. So I've covered this just now. I mentioned the force by force convection where the fluid is made to flow because of external forces. Whether you have palm, you have compressor, for example, right? If it's natural, natural convection, usually it will be due to density or temperature difference. All right, so because when temperature is different, if uh, some of you have attended my thermal class last time, Right. So when there's temperature difference, so if you recall back, fluid, right, for some, for most of the fluid, when the temperature is very low, it has higher density. When fluid it has a higher temperature, it has low density. So in that case, so you just imagine you have a beaker. Okay, I draw it. I've forgotten. I have. <laughs> I can draw. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now let's say heating. All right. You have fluid. All right. So. When, when it's heated, right, when the fluid at this side is heated, right, then the, the temperature increase and the density it will also decrease. So it floats towards uh, upper layer. Then those that is at lower temperature, right, fluid at lower temperature, it has higher density, then it will sink to the bottom. So in this way, all right, so although there's no force motion, but because of the temperature difference, it brings about density difference. So it will bring about uh, this fluid motion here, circular motion of the fluid. So that's why there will be movement of fluid, right? Bulk motion of fluid, right? That's the natural convection, okay? Now, uh, all right. So convective transport is due to bulk fluid motion, while the diffusive transport is due to random molecular motion, right? Whether it's collision, all right? Okay, let's see here. Okay, now, so why is it important that you need to know what are the type of transport mechanism? Because later, when you are going to formulate temperature or velocity profile sometimes, or you are going to analyze the question how to solve it, you need to know what is happening. Is it a diffusion? Is it a convection? Is it conduction? Or is it convection? All right, so, and in some cases, you, you may find that all this may happen at the same time, right? For example, here, 
all right, you, you have uh, diffusion. So this region is, uh, you have more red molecules, while this region you have more blue molecules. Then there will be diffusion that occurring from left to right, right to left. And then, well, let's say this plate here is at a higher temperature, it's being heated. Well, this one is at a cooler temperature. So, so which means at the same time, the heat may be conducted as well, right? The heat may be conducted in this way as well. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, correct. From higher temperature region to lower temperature region. Or if the fluid, sometimes the fluid, it may be moving at the same time. So uh, later in one of the chapter, when we are going to analyze uh, and formulate the temperature profile, there's an example on how we're going to formulate it. If, if um, let me see, if the fluid is moving and at the same time there is heat transfer. Yeah, that, that would be, that, that's very interesting how we formulate it. All right. So, because last time in heat or mass transfer, you usually just focus on one, but in this module, for some cases, we'll consider both at the same time, right? Both transport mechanism, conduction, uh, sorry, uh, diffusive or molecular transport and collection at the same time, right? Now, I'll just go a, a, a bit further before we take a five minutes break. Uh, we'll talk about the constitution laws. <clears throat> Or oh, before we proceed further, do you have any question about transport mechanism? No? Alright, just a revisit back on some of the basic, yeah? Now, this word here, it might look a bit strange to you. Actually, you have learned about all most of the constitution law that is necessary for heat and mass transfer already. Just that the term, this term here is a bit different. Now, why is it called constitution law and not conservation law? Now, conservation law is those that is very in very general form that you can apply it to heat, mass, or momentum transfer. But constitution law is more specific, right? So, for example, mm, let me think. Let's say the rate of heat in, right, minus the rate of heat up is equals to the rate of heat accumulation accumulation right so let's say we assume there's no generation of heat right no heat generation and then let's say if this is a steady state let's say if it's a steady state process right definitely we'll then take this rate of accumulation here heat accumulation to be zero so which means uh, what we have here the rate of heat in minus the rate of heat out it will be equals to zero Right. So if you look at this one here, the general one, or, or if you want, okay, we, we add, we add, okay, rate of heat generation, right? So at the same time, we assume there's no rate of heat generation, right? No generation of heat and it's steady state. So the equation down to here. So this one, yep, this we call it the conservation law. Yes. Conservation law, all right? So the constitutive law is those that constitute constitute this section here, each of the terms in conservation law. So let's say if it's a conduction through a slab, right? You have conduction through a slab, right? So then, uh, and it's a slab, right? So which means, uh, okay, before I tell you, do you still remember what's the law that govern heat conduction? What is the name? Okay, it may be quite far from you already. It's year one or year two, your thermodynamic and heat transfer. You yes, still remember what is the name of the law that governs heat conduction? Anyone? <clears throat> we have 24 minds here, 24 very bright brains here. Anyone still remember <laughs> heat transfer for heat conduction? What are the name of the law? If it's convection, that's the Newton law of cooling, right? How about conduction? Something start with F. Not the four letter word, please, huh? Yeah, thanks, Edmund. Thank you. Fourier law. Yeah, Fourier law, right? Fourier law. Which uh, so if it's conduction, then how you how you substitute in the constitutive law? So example of constitutive law is like the Fourier law, right? The law, uh, the Newton law of cooling, and if it's for uh, mass transfer, then it would be the fixed law. Right, the fixed law, right? Thanks, Aditya. Yeah, correct, Fourier. So 
then if you know this、uh, constitutive law and you know that this is rate of heat in by conduction here, then for this term we will we will substitute with negative k a d t d x. So let's say this is point x equals to zero. This is point x equals to l. Right then we will note here x equals to zero at the boundary x equals to zero. Then minus negative k a d t d x at point okay. At point x equals to l equals to zero. So this is an example of what we'll be doing in this module. All right. So last time you have seen it in your lecture slides, introducing to you all this equation here. But in this module, what you are going to learn is you formulate it, you substitute in the constitutive law, and then with the boundary condition and some assumption, you learn also the theory. Right, so that you know how to make assumption to simplify this equation here. Then eventually you get a an equation here with a temperature profile as a function of x. So which means that's the thickness of your slab. Right. So how to express the equation? Right. To to let's say、uh, if you you want to find out what is、uh, here the temperature at this point. So you just substitute x equals to x one inside this equation. Then you should be able to get the temperature at X equals to x one. So that's the reason why we are doing this. That we need to learn how to formulate it, get the temperature profile, so you can visualize how the temperature profile looks like. Right? Okay. Back back to the back to the topic. Um. So example. Right. So example of uh constitutive law is the Fourier law, fixed law. All right. So okay. So that's the example for heat and mass transfer. Now, how about momentum transport? So, for momentum transport, the constitutive law that govern momentum transport is we call it the Newton law of viscosity, which is this one, right? The shear stress equals to the negative of viscosity,、uh, then multiplied to, uh, let me think, uh, yeah, dv dy, for example, or dv dz depends on on the direction or the coordinates, right? So, this is an example. The Newton law actually is the Newton law of viscosity, all right. And if you look at all these constitutive law, if you look at it, for example here, right. So you have a differential equation term, right. So、uh, here as well for momentum transport, even for mass transfer, your flux, all right, is negative d a b,、uh, d c a d z, all right. So it's a differential equation. And if you look at this term here, you notice that the upper part, all right,、uh, the upper part is the drying force. If you recall back, okay, let me write here as well.、Uh, heat transfer negative K A D T D Z. All right. So if you notice here, all the top part, the top section is the drying force, right? Momentum trans transport. Actually, drying drying force for momentum transport is because of pressure gradient, and the pressure gradient. There's a pressure gradient because also,、uh, the pressure gradient will also bring about a change in velocity. So that's why this term here on the top drying force is velocity. As for heat transfer, so that would be heat transfer because of temperature gradient, right? Difference in temperature, Te、uh, heat transfer from higher temperature region to lower temperature region. So dT. And for mass transport, is because of concentration gradient, right? So that's why you see here, C, the difference in concentration. And the bottom part, the denominator, denominator is usually the resistant to that transport phenomena, right? So,、uh, for heat and for mass, and actually even for momentum transfer, you can notice that most of the resistance is due to the thickness, right? The thickness or the distance、uh, of the within the system. Okay, so that's the、uh, constitutive law, all right. And also, if you recall back, usually the inverse of the resistance term, it will give us the coefficient, right? The inverse of resistance will give us the coefficient. Now, talking about the constitutive law, in in most of the constitutive law, you have a differential equation term, right? The dCA dZ, dT dZ, or dV dZ. 
All right. So you know, the differential equation it usually it usually is in derivative form, right? It can be actually ordinary derivative or partial derivative. So do you know what's the difference between these two? Because in this module, you are going to deal sometimes with partial derivative. But do not need to panic. You are not expected to solve the partial differentiation because we can reduce the equation based on some assumption. Right? So when we talk about partial differential equation, right? So it's for example, if you recall back, right, when we talk about velocity, velocity has direction. Right? Velocity has direction. If it's on Cartesian coordinate, your fluid may travel in x direction, it may travel in y direction, it may travel in z direction. Right? So if it's partial derivative, then it which means it could be dvx dx plus dvy dy plus dvz dz. So with a proper assumption that you learn later, right? Perhaps then some of this term it can be cancelled. Okay, so then we can solve this only. So when your velocity doesn't vary with other direction, it only vary in, let's say, x direction, then this equation here, it will then be simplified to ordinary differential equation, let's say dvx dx. Okay, so ODE usually is with uh, like this. It's not italic. If it's partial derivative, usually it's in italic form. All right, so... If you have italic form, partial derivative, which means that particular thing that you're analyzing, it varies in a few different directions. Okay? Now, um, so this this is just an introduction. Let's say if you know force is equal to ma, instead of acceleration, you can also uh, like express it in terms of differential equation, the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Or if you want to uh, express it in terms of the position of that object, that it will be the second derivative of the position of that object with respect to time, right? So let me see how many more. Okay, I'll just do two more slides, which is related to what we are discussing. <laughs> All right, just two more slides, then we'll take a break, yeah? All right. So now what we talk about is the constitutive law in rate form. So do you still remember flux? So when we talk about flux, it's related to the rate of something divided by the cross-sectional area, right? So which means at the same time, the flux, it will also be proportional to the negative gradient of the corresponding properties like uh, negative DCA, DZ for mass transfer, negative DT, DZ for heat transfer, negative DVY or uh, dv over dz, right? So it's just that the flux is now the rate form divided by area, right? And then we, most of the time, yeah, for all these three transport phenomena, right, when you express it in equation, there will be a negative sign, right? Because if you look at it, all the transport mechanism occurs down the gradient from higher temperature to lower temperature, right? From higher concentration to lower concentration, and also from higher pressure region to lower pressure region, right? There's, there, there must be a difference in pressure than only fluid will flow, okay? You know, that's what you learn in fluid mechanics also, right? All right. So then just a quick one. Uh, we'll just visit back here on uh, all the different transport mechanisms, right? So uh, I'll start with this first, this two first. So mass transfer, as mentioned just now, is governed by fixed law for the diffusive transport and for heat transfer, Conduction governs by Fourier law, right? And then you have the molar flux or mass flux denoted by an A, right? Heat flux, uh, usually they use a small letter and then maybe a double prime, all right? And the gradient for mass transfer is due to concentration, gradient for heat transfer due to temperature. So if you recall back, the coefficient is the diffusivity, DAV, or the diffusion coefficient, and for conduction is the K, thermal conductivity. Okay, this is if it's the case for molecular transport. Well, for momentum, molecular transport is governed by the Newton law of viscosity. All right, so uh, I just rewrite it because this is new. <coughs> <coughs> so for momentum transfer, the flux form, we actually call it the shear stress. 
All right. It's a sheer stress. So I'll talk about this in, in the next hour of the lecture. Why is it sheer stress? All right. Or, or another term for it is momentum flux. So the gradient is due to the velocity or the pressure gradient. And the coefficient is the viscosity. Viscosity. All right. So if it's convective transport, so for mass convection, uh, mass transfer by uh, convective transport, if you recall back uh, last time, uh, we use different type of K, right, to denote it, KX, KY, and then uh, let me recall, KL, KC, something like this, right? Okay, that's for convective mass transfer. So if it's convective heat transfer, that will be H. So uh, the interesting thing is in this module, we are going to learn. So last time you just apply the H value uh, when it's given, right? But where does the H value come from? So in this module, you are going to learn the different correlation that applies to calculating the H value. And you have an assignment, all right? There will be assignment two and also a practical, all right? To, to analyze on this, the H value, right? So as for momentum transfer for convective transport, then uh, the coefficient will be the friction factor that we will discuss on week two. All right, so we'll discuss this on week two. Okay, so any questions so far before we take a break? Any question? You can unmute to us or you can type in the chat chat area. Or if it's all good so far, you can give a thumbs up. All right, then we'll take a break. Okay, so, okay, thanks. So we'll take a break for five minutes. You can come back at 11. Eight, and also I will be uh, projecting the cam scope for you to take the attendance. So you can see the CAMS code, right? Okay, yeah, I see someone already keen. Okay, good.
Okay, so uh, it's 11.08 already. Uh, but so far, there's only 12, 21 students taken the attendance. How about another... Oh, just 21. I thought that there's 24 students. <coughs> okay, so... Uh, in case anyone haven't taken attendance, so later remind me to open it back for you. Right, open the cams for you. Um, there's five more minutes, so perhaps I copy it in the chat area. Then I will continue the lecture. So the cams passcode in the chat area just valid for another four minutes only, yeah. Alright, so I will stop sharing the time code. I need to change to the lecture slide. Give me a minute, yeah. Uh, Dr. Chow, you're muted. Can, can you hear me now? Okay, right. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Yihong. <laughs> I didn't realize it. Okay, now, um, because just now I couldn't share screen from my iPad, so I have to leave and then rejoin again. So maybe automatically it muted me. Right. So now, try to hear. So now, when we talk to, about fluid flow, in reality, the fluid will flow in many direction, x, y, z, or in between. All right. So then, how are we going to analyze it? So that's why uh, here there's a del operator, a mathematical operator that can be catered to this one here, where the del operator it 
here it says it can of okay the operator the name of it it can also be known as the differential operator so it can be regarded as a vector whose component in three principal direction of the Cartesian coordinate system are partial differentiation of it respect to <coughs> those three directions. Okay, what it means, right? So uh, basically, it's something like this. What it means here, component here, it means velocity in x direction, velocity in y direction, velocity in z direction. Let's say if it's on Cartesian coordinate system. Let's say this one. Cartesian usually is the let's say the cube, right? Where where if you look at it, right? So example. Let, let me see how I can draw it better. So I think I follow this direction. X. So let's say this is your X, this is your Y, this is your Z. That's the Cartesian coordinate, right? So it says the vector whose component, uh, the three component, right, uh, in three principal direction, Vx, Vy, and Vz, are partial differentiation of their respective direction. So which is dx, dy, and dz. That's the function of the del operator, so that it allows us to analyze right, the component, some component, which is a vector in their respective direction. Okay, now, so that's before then, before we talk about the del operator, we look further into it, we need to talk about what's scalar, what is vector, what is tensor, right? So like you see just now, right? So when the del operator of velocity, velocity is a vector, right? When it's expressed explicitly, the del operator of velocity, it comes in the form of differential, partial differential equation, all right? So if let's say we can assume there's no velocity, there's no fluid flow in y direction, no fluid flow in z direction, the fluid only flows in the x direction, then we can't simplify the equation to ordinary differential equation, which is dvx dx, right? That's what we call the ordinary differential equation. So this one in explicit form is a partial differential equation, all right? Now, then what is scalar, what is vector, and what is tensor? So if it's a scalar, if you recall back, uh, it, for the physical quantity, right, if it's a scalar, it only tells us about the magnitude. For example, length. <coughs> For example, length, you have cm, meter, km. So with that, then you know what is the magnitude. Although its physical quantity is like one, but one cm is very different from one km. Right. So the scalar, right? It tells us what's the magnitude between cm, for example, and km. As for vector, example is the velocity that I mentioned just now, right? It not only tells us about the magnitude, but also the direction. Is it in X, Y, or Z direction? If it's a Cartesian coordinate, or if it's a cylindrical coordinate, is it in R, Z, or theta direction, for example? Right? Velocity is an example. Uh, and also force, force as well. Okay? If it's tensor, so in this module, we deal with tensor. Not only magnitude, it gives us magnitude, all right? Information about magnitude, the direction, and as well as the last thing here, which is different, is the plane at which, uh, whether is it the force or the stress that works on, right? The plane, the plane, all right? The plane, that's a different thing. So example would be the stress, the stress that you look at later when we describe it. So last time, whenever you all learn, right? The stress is only appears like this, right? Then it equals to some equation. But in actual, the stress is a tensor. So there will be two subscript. So there's one subscript, let's say J, and another subscript I, right? So we'll talk about this in the next slide, right? So one of it tells us what's the direction, and another tells us what is the, uh, at which plane the force acts on, all right? Now before we look at that, all right? So let's talk about what is momentum transfer right what is momentum transfer the transfer of momentum now can anyone tell me uh if you remember what's the formula for calculating momentum what's the formula 
Uh, the good thing about online class is you can Google <laughs> when your lecturer asks you a question, right? So what's the formula for calculating momentum? Momentum is equals to? Yes, mass multiplied to velocity. Thanks, Yi Hong. Mass multiplied to velocity. Yeah, from Edmund, yes. Thank you, yeah. Equals to mv. So it has the unit of uh, kilogram meter multiplied to meter per second. That's momentum, right? Okay, so I'll come back to this again later in the next slide, all right? This is a quick check on if you all remember what is momentum, right? Now, but what actually is momentum? Have you all thought about it and how it occurs? How is being transferred, all right? So here, let's look at this schematic diagram, all right? So now, let's say there's a system Right. If you look at it here, there's two parallel plates, all right, and it has a cross-sectional area of A, right? And between these two plates, it's being separated at a distant Y apart, okay? And this, between these two plates, there's a fluid, right? Let's say there's a fluid. When we talk about fluid, it can be gas <coughs> or liquid, okay? A sandwich between these two plates here. And initially, at time smaller than zero, the fluid is at rest. All right? Now, let's say at time in it goes to zero. Now, you have a very itchy hand. <laughs> all right? We pull this bottom plate here. All right? We drag it. All right? And maintain it at a certain force F. All right? So we set the bottom plate in motion, right? By applying a force F and then meant to maintain it at a certain velocity v right so which means then definitely some part of the fluid it will start to move right so at a very small time t you'll notice that all right this plate that is moving right at a velocity v right so the the layer of fluid you have a very thin layer of fluid which is just next to the plate it will also move at the same velocity as the lower plate it will gain the same velocity. And at the same time, some momentum, because when the fluid is moving, which means the molecules inside, it's also transferring as well, it's moving as well. And then it may transfer to other layers, right? The momentum is transferred to other layers. So that's why you see there's a velocity built up, right? But on the second layer, the velocity is still smaller. Let's say I denote this as V1. It will be smaller than V. And then if this layer here is V2, the velocity is much smaller than uh, here, it's smaller than V1 and even much smaller than the velocity of the plate, right? This is what happened during the very uh, few seconds, nanoseconds, right? Or we call it the startup, right? Where under this condition here, it's still unsteady state, right? It's not a steady state flow yet. So, and in this case, you'll notice that the velocity profile, so why we denote it as x? Because the fluid is going in the x direction. Let's say we assume that this direction is x direction, right? So we denote it as x, while well, this direction here is y, right? The y direction. So now, during unsteady state, uh, during the startup, right? So your velocity profile is a function of both y, right? Which means the distance from the lower plate, Right, and time as well because it's unsteady. All right, the velocity is, is profile is building up. Right, so maybe at several uh, nanoseconds la later, then maybe the velocity profile will look like this. Which eventually, when steady flow is established, right, when steady flow is established, this is the velocity profile that you, you see. All right, the velocity profile. So, what it means here, usually we'll denote here the lower plate. The position is y equals to zero and then the upper plate let's say we denote it as y equal to theta delta okay so at y equals to zero position y equals to zero the layer fluid that is just next to the lower plate right the velocity would be equals to the velocity of the lower plate right so it will follow it because of the momentum all right and then and then when the momentum is transferred between the fluid of each layer, right? So the momentum at this layer, it will be higher. Uh, I'll talk about the momentum later also. Huh? All right. So, okay. Now, now. So what happens? Uh, <laughs> so when the fluid is transferred, you just imagine, 
me see if I have something here. Not really. All right. So what happens is, you just imagine the layer of weight at this lower layer here. The molecules is moving, right? It's been it's moving. There's random molecular motion as the fluid is moving, and then of course some of the molecule as it's moving, it will move up, right? So which means the faster moving molecules, it will transfer to another layer of fluid. Then it will move the next layer of fluid to um, more more active active as well. To to there's more random molecular motion, right? But at the same time, the second layer, which is slow moving, right? Slightly slow moving, some of the molecule it will travels to the fast moving layer as well right so there's there's transfer of molecules from to to and from each layer right so then the molecules from the second layer uh, some of the molecules that is uh, moving at slightly slower velocity it will still transfer to the third layer the higher layer right but aff affecting the one that is not moving at all so that's why you see the velocity is actually decreasing right where up to here where at the plate y equals or at the distance right or at this position y equals to delta okay i'll let you guess what would be the velocity value of the velocity let's guess just just a general guess what do you think would be the velocity be how about others others have been very quiet uh, besides e Hong and edmund how about others no worries in my class if it goes wrong it's okay okay from adrian e Hong. Yeah, it will be equal to zero. Yes, it's equal to zero. And there's a term for it, right? So I'll introduce you to the term why is it zero in the next in the next lecture, lah, not now, right? So that you'll not be saturated. So it's zero because also one thing, there's friction. Don't forget there's friction to plate flow because this plate here is not moving. It's static, right? There's friction. So at y equals to delta, the velocity is equal to zero. And between... Well, this distance zero to delta, you see that the velocity is decreasing. All right. So, but at steady state, once steady state is established, then you have a, 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 a this laminar flow velocity profile that is established already. All right. At, at some certain time that is large enough from startup. Okay. All right. So, this is an example of the velocity profile for a laminar flow. Let's say if you set the bottom plate only uh, in motion. All right. So then, if you set this in motion and you want to maintain this velocity profile, <coughs> sorry, then you definitely need to apply a certain velocity, right? A fixed, uh, sorry, a fixed force to maintain it at a velocity v. Now, then, how to put together this equation here? Now, that's your Newton law of viscosity, which is the force per unit area. All right is equal to the velocity, uh, uh, viscosity, All right? This is the viscosity. Viscosity multiplied to the velocity and the distance between the two plates, for example, all right? And in, in this module, right? So if you look at it, you can notice that the force applied is proportional to the velocity, which means the larger the force that you apply for the plate to flow, the bottom plate you pull it, pull it, at a larger force, definitely the velocity would be higher, right? Okay, so the force is in, uh, in, uh, proportional to the velocity and also the area, but inversely proportional to the uh, distance between the plate. All right. So now one thing is, uh, in this module, we don't write in the form of force per unit area. The one that we are going to express is this one, tau y x. Right. So what is tau y x? So now. This x here, it tells us what is the direction of the force that you apply. So, for this case that we mentioned just now, the, the bottom plate is set in motion in x direction, right? This is the x direction, this is y direction, right? So, that's why this x here is the direction of the force applied, while this y here is a bit tricky, <laughs> right? If you look at it, all right, okay, if I draw a 3D one, this is the plate. The two plate. Now, this bottom plate here is you apply a force F to set in in motion, right? And if you look at it, if I'm going to draw the direction, this is X, this is Y, and let's say this is Z, all right? So if you notice here, this one, this bottom plate here, is at what direction? So if you look at it, it's actually at a direction that is perpendicular to the y direction, right? 
this plane here where the force acts, acts on is at a direction that is perpendicular to the y direction. So that's why we write here y. All right, so this tells us on which plane that the force acts on. So which just now we mentioned uh, the shoe stress is a tensor, right? It has three information. It tells us about the magnitude, the direction, and the plane at which the force acts on. All right? Okay, so from now onwards, when we talk about momentum transfer, all right, so we work a lot with uh, this one, the shear stress, or actually another term for it, we call it the momentum flux, all right? So you can call it as momentum flux or the shear stress, right? It, it, it's uh, the same for this module, all right? So, and it's always occurred down the gradient, right? So that's why your shear stress all right, it's equal to negative of the viscosity multiplied to dvx dy. All right, and or how you want to mention this here, you can either call it as you can see here, force in the x direction, the force travel in the x direction, but it acts on a plane that is perpendicular to the y direction. All right, okay. Or you just say tau bar x. As long as the most important thing that you know that the first subscript tells the plane, the second subscript tells the direction of the force. But this is something that it's that you need to know, and you must be very clear on this because later when you formulate the velocity profile, you need to be very clear on what's the direction of the fluid flow and on which plane that the force acts on, and then put it in. In, 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 in a symbol like this, tau y x, right? So you need to practice this. Okay, so now, before I move on to the next slide, a any questions so far? So this, uh, this is a new thing. All good. <laughs> okay, how about others? Now I only received one all good. <laughs> Earlier, a lot of thumbs up. Uh, yes. You have a question, is it? I, I saw you raise hand. Any question? Or you want to put a thumbs up by accidentally click on something else? Okay, still okay. Huh? Now, it's okay. Now, if this is too imaginative for you to visualize it, let's see now. You relate it to the, when you play decks of cards, right? So you have a decks of cards, right? When you play, right? And then what you do usually at the start, you sweep it over. So you notice when you slide it to the right hand side or if left hand side are for left handed. So let's say if you slide, slide it to the right hand side, usually on the first first um, the first card right on the topmost on the topmost section, it will follow your hand right. It will stop where your hand stop. Then the rest it is at a different position. Right? The the higher one then it will be next to the yeah Right, so it it, it, it it will be at different position. That's an example of momentum transfer, right? So uh, the faster moving one, right, the faster moving molecule, it will transfer the momentum to the lower moving molecule and that to the lower and lower and eventually to the last one here, the, the bottom plate that is not moving, right, is static, then the velocity is zero. So that's actually momentum transfer, right? The transfer of momentum from faster moving, uh, faster moving molecule to uh, to the next lesser moving molecule, right? And it's why we say actually, but the net of it then it creates momentum transfer, right? So if we look at the decks of card, then if you are going to write the tensor, the shear stress, if you look at it in this case, right? So your shear stress or momentum flux, right? The direction, it would then be in X direction, right? Because here you can see it move in the X direction, but your force, Right, the force that you apply, right, is on a plane. Now, uh, perhaps I'll let you guess. So, uh, what is the subscript that I should put here? It acts on which plane? The plane that is perpendicular to which direction? Let's guess for this, this question here. The plane is perpendicular to which direction? Okay, I have someone new. Thanks, Bernard. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Yong. Yeah, exact direction, right? This is, okay, let me highlight. This one, right, just now your hand is put on this first card here. You slide it to the right-hand side, right? And that first card here, if you look at it, 
is actually perpendicular to the z direction. So that's why when you when you write it is tau z x. Okay, tau z x. And this is a shear stress because the the force is applied parallel to the surface. Okay, it's a shear stress. <coughs> So what I explained just now is here. You all can go through it later. I don't want to read from the slide. <laughs> it's a lot. All right. Now, again, all right. This is very important to stress to you. Okay. The first subscript Z, it tells us about which plane the force acts on. Okay. And then X, it tells us about the direction of the fluid flow. Now, I would like you to like uh, have a clear mind on this relationship here. Okay. You know that momentum, right? So momentum is equals to mv, mass multiplied to velocity. So you have the unit of kilogram meter per second, right? Then uh, later when we are going to formulate the velocity profile, you may work on the rate of momentum, right? The rate of momentum. So when we say rate of something, which means that will be the component divided by time. The, uh, the change of something respect to time, for example. So then it will be momentum of, the, oh, sorry, mass multiplied to velocity divided by time, right? So then it has the unit of kilogram meter per second square. All right. Now we have the flux, momentum flux. Or you can also call it as the shear stress. Okay. Momentum flux, it would be then the rate of momentum divided by area. You, won't, you may want to note it down because this is something that is still always confused. Right? So the rate of momentum divided by area, so which means kilogram meter per second square right, multiplied to 1 over uh, m square. Right? So if you simplify it, which means the momentum flux of the shear stress, it has the unit of kilogram uh, per meter second square. Correct, right? Let me check. <laughs> meter second square. Yeah, kilogram per meter second square. All right, so, so which is what mentioned here, shear stress is the rate of flow of momentum per unit area. So you can see here, this is this part here is the rate of momentum. All right then divided by area. Okay. Any questions so far about this treating here, momentum, rate of momentum and momentum flux? Okay, thanks, thanks. All right, then we'll go further here. Now, so since shear stress is a tensor, right? So if we put it in matrix form, you can see that it consists of nine components. Nine components. And then out of this nine component, three would be normal stress, six would be shear stress. All right. So uh, we'll do an exercise on identifying this uh, tomorrow. But before that, uh, let me show you this one here. Just to make sure that you are, you, you are clear, especially on a plane. Because I think uh, the second substrate, the J here, it shouldn't be a problem. If you understand the fluid overall is flowing in an X or in a Y or in a Z direction, the one that will always confuse students is this I here, the plane at which uh, the force act on. So if you look at here, if this is the X direction, this is the Y, this is the Z direction. Now for this plane, perhaps I should show you this one <laughs> to test your <laughs> All right, so let's say I have this fluid moving in X direction. So then I will be writing uh, this one as uh, X direction, right? Now, can you tell me here what would be the subscript that we should write? The plane, plane here is perpendicular to which direction? The force is acting on which plane? Anyone? Is it X or Y or Z? If the fluid flows in this direction, 
So you imagine it as if there's an, a, 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 a force here, right, that acts on this cross-sectional area, right, or this plane here. But this plane at the same time is in which direction? The plane is perpendicular to x direction, right? It's x. It's x. This, this one, this one, right? This plane here, this is x, this is z, this is y. So this plane is perpendicular to the x direction, right? If it's y, it will be this one. This one is y. The plane is, this one is y direction, right? The plane is perpendicular. The force is acting on a plane that is perpendicular to a y direction. So this will be then tau. So let's say I, I want it to move in x direction, right? M move in this direction. Huh? So that will be tau y x. Yeah, it's a bit weird. <laughs> okay, because one substrate is for the direction of the fluid flow overall, right? But one of it is for uh, the force is acting on which plane, and that plane is perpendicular to which direction, all right? So, and the last one here then, Let's say, uh, uh, so still the same, we want it to move in the x direction, right? So the force is acting on this plane here, but this plane is perpendicular to the z direction, right? So that's why it's tau z x, all right? We'll practice more tomorrow by doing this one, right? We'll, we'll practice tomorrow again. Now, if, if you look at here, you'll notice that this two subscript is the same. So which means this one here is actually a normal stress. Right, so if it's a normal stress, we don't use tau. You should use the sigma. So it should be expressed as sigma x x. All right, that that's for normal stress. We call this normal stress. Okay, now so you you can go through the slides again. So it, it has very detailed uh, example to show you how to write the subscript. All right, so I I will not repeat it. I'll not repeat it because tomorrow I'll, I will I will discuss with you again. All right, so then you can then present all in this form. All right, but okay, let me show you. But actually, if you look at it, right, there there are only three normal stress. Right, so normal stress we write write it as this one sigma. And then the rest are all shear stress. So all this you have to revise it to tau, for example, tau y x. Right, tau z x. Right, so it's being uh, yeah, it's revised here, right, to show properly. All right. Let me see what's this. Yeah, here. So shear stress is where the stress is parallel to the surface of the material. Right. Well, normal stress is the one where the stress act normal or vertical, or you can also say perpendicular to the surface. Right. So shear stress is like the normal pressure that you have. Uh, sorry, normal stress is like the pressure that Term that you learned last time is the force per unit area. Okay. All right. So, um, before I proceed further, any question that you want to ask about this one? About the two subscript? Any question? Uh, Doctor Chow. Mm -hmm. For the <clears throat> for the first, the uh, can you like go up like? Uh, to slide number, yeah, 39. Uh. So it's like... I don't have the slide number, actually. Is it this one? Uh, yeah, I think so. Anyway, my question is, right, mm -hmm. uh, when you say stress tensor, mm -hmm. okay, for example, you look at the force actor on area to Y, right? Like the second example. How okay. can it move on the X direction if you apply force on the Y plane? Wait, uh, again, uh, you mean move in the X direction acted uh, on the Y plane here? Yeah. Uh, this is a good question. You know why? <laughs> Actually, when you derive that we will, in, in future, right, we will, let's say, work with the narrow stock equation. There will be a whole chunk of equation where, let's say, we look at the the... the the, in the equation, we have Vx, Dvx. I can't remember in exact, but something like this. Dx plus, uh, let me think. Let me recall. I'm not sure if this, this is the form of the equation. Dvx, Dy plus Vz. 
D, B, Z, D, Y. That's a good, good question. Now, in reality, of course, if this weight is moving in the X direction, uh, this plane here, uh, when it's perpendicular to Y direction, right? So it's it's not quite possible. So that's when, when we're going to derive the, not to say not, not possible, but they might be very little of this tra uh, transfer transport in this direction. It, they might be little, so little that later when we are going to derive the velocity profile, most probably we will assume it to be zero. That's what happened. Hopefully this can answer your question. What we are learning now, we will still need to learn it to analyze how to write the notation for analysis purpose. Right? When you write down a notation, right, then later we will base on assumption that assuming that the, the fluid flow in that direction on that plane is negligible. Then when we derive it, we will assume it to be zero. Okay, that's later. But now what you need to do is you need to understand how to write the notation. For the stress tensor. Okay, yeah? Okay, so any other question? <coughs> no? All right, so almost the end of the lecture already. So, what we have talked about today is uh, the Dell operator. Uh, we'll do some example tomorrow in tutorial class. Uh, and then uh, the function of the partial derivative. And one more, the substantial derivative. Uh, I will not talk about it today because you are going to learn it around week five. Okay, I'll, I'll introduce it to you on week five, right? So uh, just to remind you, so we have three types of coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates, cylindrical coordinate, and spherical coordinates. So we'll be using these two more often because sometimes we deal with heat transfer in slab or some flow in a channel a square channel or rectangular channel, or cylindrical, of course, uh, uh, which is very common if we have pipe flow, right? So these two coordinates are uh, the more important one for this module, right? So cylindrical co coordinate, you have R, theta, and Z direction. So R is this direction here. Z usually is like the height or the length of the pipe, right? And then theta is uh, somewhere between this radius, angle between this radius and this axis, X axis, for example. Right, spherical, we don't often use it. Okay, so and just now we have also talked about, okay, so you have momentum, a uh, mass, momentum, and energy transfer, which you can express in this form, right, if it's in rate form. So uh, later in week five onwards, right, then you may, we may see some of the equation written in this one, the big letter form. We call it the substantial derivative. So, uh, in, in a very brief one, right, substantial derivative, which means is an example where you observe the change of certain component as you are moving along with it at the same velocity. That's what we call substantial derivatives. All right. Okay. Now I think that's the end of our lecture already. So uh, for the next few slides, and also I have uploaded the formula as well in my times, where you can see. Uh, the least of formula for the Dell operator, let's say if it deals with the Cartesian, uh, the cylindrical or the spherical coordinates. So that's for your reference only. You do not need to memorize it. Huh? <laughs> and actually, you are not expected to solve this Dell operator during test or final exam. What we do is more of applying the equation, uh, applying the equation that has been simplified from the Dell operator, and then we work from there. All right, so no worries. This is more like just introduction for you. Okay, so I think that's all for today. All right, so uh, do you have any further question? <coughs> Excuse me. Has everyone taken your attendance? So if everyone has taken the attendance, then uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much. So I'll see you in class tomorrow. I think our classroom is where? Yeah? Let me see. The 24 student, I think. The 24 student, but they give us... Oh, BG. Oh, all right. Block B, Uh, the ground floor. 
So it might, it, it may be a smaller classroom. I'm not sure whether it's a thirty person classroom or a small one. All right. So it's at BG fifteen tomorrow four to six p.m. All right. So that that's all for today. And then uh, if you have any question, yeah, you can ask me tomorrow. <laughs> all right. So thank you very much. So uh, I I'll, I'll not be able to post the link uh, because I think they don't have a link for Teams to for the video. So if you want to refer back to a recorded video, I think you just log in back to Teams, then find back this chat area, and then you should be able to lo locate this uh, recorded video already. All right? Okay? So thank you very much. So see you all tomorrow.